Hello, my name is James Appleby and I will be your Medical Doorway Mathematics Instructor. So who is the guy with the beard? Well, he's a graduate from Keel University, PhD pending, has twin bachelors in mathematics, and has been teaching A-level mathematics for four years. So I'm fairly certain I know what's going to be coming up on your exams and I'm there to prepare you for them. The mathematics you need for your exams is what I am here to teach you. I'm not going to go into all of the detail for the full A level in mathematics, I am just going to be focusing on material that you will need in these entry exams. I'll also pass you a couple of extra tricks to give you an edge, little extra checks, maybe a shortcut method, just so that you can get through these exams with the minimum of inconvenience. The syllabus We'll begin with the laws of indices, going over these. These are mostly revision. After this, we'll be looking at identifying the number of solutions to various equations, so quadratics, cubics, and so on. We'll be looking at inequalities, as these will play a large part in your exam. We'll also do an introduction to complex numbers. Now, a lot of other students won't have this facility. Usually they'll be seeing complex numbers for the first time on the exam if they haven't done mathematics. You will be different. We'll then go on to function classification. This is mostly just learning, uh, giving words to describe certain shapes in graphs. It is literally just learning a bit of jargon. From here we'll move on to inverse functions, which you'll find very useful in looking at later materials. We'll then do some trig identities. I'm going to give you a couple of extra ones which should help you evaluate questions much faster in the exams, the so-called useful triangles. We'll then look at exponents and logarithms. These shouldn't be too difficult. They largely follow a similar path to the laws of indices. However, I'll be focusing mainly on the sort of questions you'll see in the exams as sometimes they use a couple of nasty tricks. You'll be wise to these. We'll then move on to circles and conics. This is quite a wide topic and it'll be split into two lectures rather than a single one. Again, we're looking at exam questions for this particular set of topics, not the entire subject. We'll then move on to arithmetic and geometric progressions. We'll cover both limits and sums as both have been seen to come up in the exams. After this, we will look at probability and permutations. This is split into two lectures, one on probability, one on permutations. It'll give you the outlines and basics you need, and again, will be very, very exam question focused. After this, we're going to look at an extra topic, which you might not have mentioned or met before, called differentiation. This is a, a slight extra topic, but however, it's very useful in the next topic, which is maxima and minima. Combined together, these should give you an edge over the people who haven't heard of these before. They're going to have to draw the graph. You're going to be able to do a simple operation to get through it. After this, we'll look at kinematics. It's just a set of equations. You've probably met them from GCSE. This is largely going to be a refresher. Again, we'll be looking at questions that have come from the exams, so you're aware of what sort of knowledge to expect. Then we'll move to vectors. Now, vectors don't crop up too often on the exams. When they do, they often form more than one question, so it's worth learning these. Finally, we'll move on to areas and volumes. Largely, we're going to be looking at scaling areas and volumes, as the rest of the material you should know from GCSE, but the scaling you might have forgotten. All of these exams will be short bites. They're not going to be long. None of them are over 20 minutes. They're delivering just the material you need, not all the extra fluff. A couple of quick tips before I uh, sign off on this lecture. A pen and paper will be handy for every one of the lectures. I'm usually going to ask you to write down formula or pause the video and try some of the examples, and I do strongly encourage you to do this. Now, the examples you do won't be multiple choice, unlike the exams. So if you can actually manage the examples in the class, then you should have no trouble with the exam questions at all, as those will be easier. You can rule out impossible answers and you have a smaller set of possible answers to choose from. If you're not sure on the examples of why each step is being made, pause the video, go back, have a closer look at the theory. If you don't know the why, you'll struggle with the how, and the how is what is important for your exams. One last quick note, 
Some papers in the exams might use a comma for a decimal place rather than a full stop. This is a common practice in Europe. It isn't actually a typo. And so just be aware that you might see pi as 3,141 rather than 3.141. The context will usually be clear. It's just another thing that you don't want to be panicking about. Hopefully I'll see you in the rest of the lectures. Thank you for listening.